Hello and happy Sunday, everybody. This is Ruby D, the goddess entrepreneur, and of course it's Sunday, so that means it is Soul Sunday with Ruby and Allison. And don't mind the hair, but I am glad to be here on this Sunday. Um, quick for my replay viewers, if you happen to catch this on the replay, please comment your name and where you're watching from. So first weekend, thank you for watching. And we can also see how far our message is reaching. Um, I am, dang, Allison on it today. <laughs> okay, Allison, I'm sending you your invite. So I am sending it now. Add. Hello, everybody. And Terry. What up, Raymond? Hey, Robin. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Hello, David. What's up, Mike? What's up, sis? What's up? Hi, what's going on? Thank you, Hey, girl. I see. I see. <laughs> Great minds. <laughs> But since Allison is on so quickly today, let's go and get to it. Of course, again, this is Soul Sunday with Ruby and Allison. We welcome you all with us this Sunday. And today we're actually going to continue our conversation from last week, but more so from the emotional and spiritual aspect of mm -hmm. being an entrepreneur and having those moments when you kind of second guess yourself on whether or not entrepreneurship is was a mistake or, you know, should you kind of backtrack or, you know, whatnot. But quick introductions. I am Ruby D, the Goddess Entrepreneur. I am author of the Goddess Grind book series, which focuses on you becoming the best version of you in order to manifest success personally and professionally. Um, in addition to being an author, I am also a speaker. I am a chakra expert as well as I don't like to refer to myself as a therapist or a counselor or anything like that. Um, I'm like a guide, a guide, a guiding light. I'll put it like that. Um, also a radio personality, um, owner of Soul Therapy Radio with myself and Tara. So, Allison, tell everybody about yourself. Peace and blessings, everybody. I am Allison Denise uh, of Allison Denise LLC Speaking and Coaching and 501c3 nonprofit, the HDL Group. I am a transformational coach. And by that, for those who don't know the difference between that and a life coach, I actually meet you at rock bottom. I guide you and show you how to find your way out of that, that last straw moment so that you can get back to having the best life you can. My goal is to show you how to heal, grow, and live beyond your relationship status by becoming better, not bitter, enjoying your life along the journey, and having the best relationships possible, starting with the one that you have with yourself. I'm a speaker, uh, an author, a blogger, a vlogger, uh, and radio personality. I am one quarter of the best blog radio show on Fishbowl Radio Network. And, uh, of course, I'm right here as one half of Soul Sunday with my sister, Ruby. So I'm glad to be on today. <laughs> Yay! Thank you, everybody, for tuning Yay. in. We appreciate the love, the likes. If anything that we say resonates with you or you feel somebody else could use, please feel free to share it. Um, we welcome comments. We welcome engagement. We welcome input, anything. But um, as I said, today's topic is going to be focused on entrepreneurships and well, entrepreneurship in those mental or emotional moments where you feel like entrepreneurship may not have been the right thing for you to do or the best thing for you to do. Um, last week, we um, started the conversation and, you know, it was a very entertaining conversation we will say that so if you didn't catch that be sure you go back and watch it but to start off today um the first thing let's see what's on my list you know i have my whiteboard hey jimmy hey chris hey everybody for tuning in thank you um the first thing on my list any mini miny seems like nothing is working we'll start there 
Um, we know entrepreneurship is a journey all of its own. And become an entrepreneur, and we're we're referring to full time entrepreneurship, not part time. Um, it's very different when you go from still having a job and owning a business to when you just go to being a full time entrepreneur. Not to say that you know, not to make it any less um, seem like it's any less light or that the journey is different or easier it's just that when you go full time um take don't start today now you know this is my little blanket so i don't even know why you got the extra today but it's okay though i'm not gonna i'm not gonna block it um but with being a full-time entrepreneur we have to take things and look at things just a little lot bit different <laughs> so Mm -hmm. Um, when you feel like nothing is working, okay, of course, when you want to start your business you, and your business and you're like, Hey, I'm really going to do this. I'm really amped about it. I'm, and you jump and you're like, okay, I got a little bit of this under control. I got a little bit of that under control. And then you have your social media page. You got your email list set up. You got your squeeze page. You got your, your logo, you got your website and you like, I'm ready. And then a week go by, you know, at first, you know, you got a little bit of support engagement and you're like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. And then the longer it goes and it's just like, wait a minute, this is not going quite like I thought it was. The people that I thought mm -hmm. would be supporting me and sharing my post or liking my post or engaging, they're not doing that. Um, you know, before I got started, you know, I went to a few empowerment conferences. I took a few classes. I did a few things, but I am not having the level of success or anything like that that I thought I would have. And at that particular mm -hmm. point when you're like, okay, well, let me keep going. Let me try. And you're not seeing any results. Then you get to the point where you start second guessing yourself like, should I be doing this? Should I have walked away from my job to be an entrepreneur? Should I, okay, I've tried this and it's not working. I've tried Facebook Live and it's not working. I've tried sending out email blasts and it's not working. I've tried a few vendor events and it's not working. What you have to realize is it's not supposed to work right out the gate. For one, you know, it's not supposed to just automatically work. There are some things that you have to learn um, that are going to benefit you in the long run. And if you come, just think about it. If you come right out the gate, just making money left and right, hand over hand, foot over foot, every, you know, you're not going to learn what you need to learn. You're not going to learn those lessons. You're not going to learn how to be consistent. You're not going to learn how to get through those particular moments where what you're doing is you have to have a certain mindset for one let me just say that and there are certain lessons mm -hmm. that you need to learn and sometimes the only way to learn it is to really just go through that ringer so i'm gonna kind of yep. stop it right there and i'm gonna let allison go ahead and chime on in because i know she got a lot to say <laughs> <laughs> You know, the, the biggest thing about going out here, here's what you have to remember as an entrepreneur. And I brought this up last week. I won't get into a lot of detail. Go watch the last the video from last week. They'll hear more about it. But you have to understand that there is a process that is going to occur when you decide to go full time as an entrepreneur. And that process, that pre-process is designed to filter out all of the things that you have, whether they be mindsets, behaviors, activity work ethic or lack of work ethic, um, irresponsibility with money, you have to understand that that pre-process is designed to refine you so that your business, when it expands, when it increases, when the money does start to come, you're not carrying habits into that new lifestyle that end up costing you your business. So if you're finding that things aren't working, if you're finding that the email blasts aren't working, if you're finding that those things aren't happening, a lot of times... It's, it's where you're being fine-tuned. It can be related to, yeah, you're telling us that you're sending email blasts, but you're really just sending them to the same people on your friends list. 
you're not going to get anywhere if you keep in that that comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So the lesson could be to pull you out of the comfort zone. The lesson could be patience. Maybe you're not a patient person. I'll be one of the first to tell you, it's not that I had a patience issue prior to entrepreneurship, but because of the gift that I had been given to teach and because I was really great with, with, with technology, I haven't had to wait long for a job. I haven't had to wait long for uh, things to come together. If I wanted a job, I just went and got it. So it's not that I had a patience issue, but I also had never walked out really having to put something in place and make it happen. Mm -hmm. And so that could be your situation too. If you were the, the star kid in high school and went to college on a full ride and you were one of the only people in your, your college class to get a job making 60 or 70 out the gate, and now you want to start a business, now you got to be humble. Sometimes we don't need to be humble because we're proud. We need to be humble because we need to understand the other side to what we've been able to experience. Right. And so if you're going through those situations, just understand it is not always a sign that you need to go back to a job or go back to work. You're simply being <laughs> refined because if you do what you want with the mindset and perspective you have now, you're going to lose it. Mm -hmm. So it's actually the universe protecting you while it is refining you. So you just want to hang in there and get through, like Ruby keeps telling me, just trust <laughs> the process. Just go through the process. Trust, <laughs> trust the process. And we're going to keep trust saying that process. over and over again. Trust the process. Yes. Yes. But yes. with doing that, one thing that I do want to point out is we know that when we start small businesses, a very small percentage make it past the six-month mark and make it past mm -hmm. the one year mark, make it past the two year mm -hmm. mark and the five year mark. Mm -hmm. um, hey, Jaleesa, hey, Bryce. Um, Bryce said, let me go back. I'm dealing with those challenges as we speak. And that's exactly why mm -hmm. we're, you know, having this discussion. Uh, yeah. The Church of Ruby and Allison, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you. But one of the things that we have to realize with those, some of those businesses or a lot of those businesses not surviving past six months, a year, two years or whatever it may be, it, but it deals with us mentally. It, it has an effect on us emotionally. I mean, if you started the business already feeling as if you were not enough and you start a business and it's not quite working out the way that you thought it would, mm -hmm. then it's going to basically magnify that feeling that you're not enough. And then right. you're, of course, that's going to further give you the impression that, okay, I shouldn't be doing this. I need to go back and get a job. And like mm -hmm. Allison said, sometimes that's not always the case. And the reason we want to have these conversations is because when you become a full-time entrepreneur, you have to be mentally strong. You have to be emotionally strong because you will get tested mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, spiritually, energetically. You will be tested in all of those areas. Um, and yeah, me and Alec can, can sit up here and talk all day and say, well, beware of this, beware of that. But it's all it all affects us differently. Um, it all it all is going to hit us at different times and in different ways. But mm -hmm. um, one of the keys that you have to realize you have to have is having a strong support system as far as an entrepreneurial circle. Um, it's good to still have your friends that have a regular job. But at the same time, you need to have a circle of friends or a triangle of friends or a line of friends or some kind of shape of friends that can help you when it comes to things specifically dealing with entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not mentally strong and you're basically getting to that point where you may break one sale, it doesn't matter if it's $5, $10, $50, $100, but one sale can make, can be the difference between life and death. Because yeah. if you're at that point and you feel like you're about to break, and if you have one more day of getting zero sales, then that may be that one day where you just decide, I can't take it anymore. 
and mm -hmm. you do something you do something unthinkable i'll just put it like that we mm -hmm. we don't want it we don't want to get to that point you know we'd rather you yeah we'd rather you go back and get the job but we don't want you to get so into it to the point where you just feel like you made the biggest mistake of your life deciding to become an entrepreneur um yeah. bryce said uh for for example i've had to deal with the patients on waiting for vendors to ship in the proper time and as well dealing with impatience from customers who already are second guessing me as a business because it's new and it started creating an anxiety for me and I just told myself to breathe and trust the process. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. That's exactly it. What, from, with me being both a consumer and a business owner, I can definitely see it from both sides because as a consumer, if I've spent my money and it only took you 30 seconds to take my money out of my account, then I expect to receive what I order in a timely fashion. Now, if for some reason I don't mm -hmm. receive it in a timely fashion and I send you a message and you say, well, I have a problem with the shipper or the vendor is a little bit late on the business side, I completely understand that because I've experienced the same thing. Just like if a company tell me we don't give refunds, I can't get mad because you don't give refunds because as a business owner, I don't do refunds. So I understand it. Um, you're absolutely right. It always happens where when you feel like giving up and then somebody comes for a sale exactly and like i said it doesn't matter the sale could have been for five dollars but you appreciate that five dollars um allison i'm gonna go ahead and let you um chime in on you know a comment on uh what he said yeah so bryce the last part you made that that is usually how it works when you get to that last straw moment where you say you know what and it doesn't always have to be a moment of frustration it can actually be a moment where you've given up it, it, it can either it can go both ways it can be doggone it i'm sick of this let me just get to let me find my resume but it can also be you know what i i just shouldn't try let me just stop trying nobody wants my product anyway in both of those cases that is usually when you get a break and you have to know what that break looks like. The break won't always be financial. That's the important thing to remember. Sometimes the break can be somebody connecting you to a bigger client. Sometimes the break can be somebody coming in and encouraging you with their words and, and, and saying certain things about, you know, I, I'll just say for me, I had a young lady who reached out a couple of weeks ago to say that uh, I was really inspiring her to do new things. And it was it came during one of those moments where I was frustrated and to get that gave me that push to keep going. Oftentimes, the only thing that we have to do as entrepreneurs is keep going. And those two words sound really simple, but they are really hard to do when you keep being met with opposition. You keep being met with rejection after rejection. Things aren't coming together. Nothing that you're doing seems to be producing a return. It feels like you're always putting money out, but you're not getting any money in. Mm -hmm. It's hard to look at those two words and say, I'm going to keep going because you don't want to. It doesn't seem like it's, it, it seems pointless and it feels like it's wasting your time. And so when you get to those moments, if you just go one more step, that is usually when you start getting connected to that break that you need to at least get some release, kind of like a marathon. It's like taking a marathon, I'll say a, a race. If you're in an a Indianapolis 500 race, it's, it's that one, even if it's 11 quick seconds, to just take a breather so that you get that renewed energy to keep going. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes that's, that's to be. And when you're dealing with the vendors and, and all of these other things, again, remember that this is a part of the process. You're being refined. And so this could be a situation where you learn best case scenario. This is where you may be learning the value of learning how to under promise and over deliver. Mm -hmm. So maybe you change what your shipping dates are going to be. Just say uh, it will take approximately 10 to 14 days to receive it just because that's how long it took the vendor the last time they had a delay. Then if they have another delay, your your shipping policy already lines up with it. Mm -hmm. But if they don't have a delay, now you have a customer who says, well, they said it would take 10 days to get here, but I got it in five. Now you got a perfect review. Right. 
So just try to look at it that way. It could be that the universe is also trying to show you uh, as long as you have to rely on other companies, you're going to have to increase the shipping time that you promise to your, your customers. Not because it's always going to take that long, but because now that your vendor has shown you that they can have a delay, you are now responsible for protecting your own reputation based off of that information. Right. So just to put that out there. Right. And I have had experiences with that myself where, you know, I've had, I have had late shipments with the vendor when I had my skincare company and I did put shipping, I mean, processing, not the shipping time may take seven to 10 days because you just never know. Um, Bryce says, mm -hmm. I was debating whether I should get a job for comfort, but that's not my passion. I'm trying to build, build a legacy for myself and my kids to pass down to my kids. So this is confirmation for me to keep going and thank you all so much for this. I just so happened to click on the video just because I saw it on my timeline and for it to be a Sunday. Um, you all are amazing and I will stay updated on you all's feeds. You are welcome and we glad, we're glad that you're watching. This is exactly why yes, we do yeah, this. Yes. But um, this is why we do it. With um, what Allison was saying to keep right in line with what she was talking about. Um, when... The next thing on the list is when you feel like you're failing. Um, when we get to the point where we try so much and we feel like we've tried everything and we feel like nothing is working and we feel like we, you, for one, start having this conversation with yourself. You're not even having it with anybody, but you start questioning yourself. Why did you do this? What do you know such and such? You tried this before and that didn't work. What made you think this would work? And you start having this head game with yourself. It's not anything that's even real. You've basically created this in your mind. Um, once we get to the point where we start creating stories and creating reasons to doubt ourselves and we start creating this conversation within ourselves of us failing and not succeeding and then we replay everything else that we feel that or other things that we didn't finish and then we start second guessing ourselves like should i really be should i really be doing this is this mm -hmm. something that i should give up should i go back to work and no that's not the case mm -hmm. for you to have those thoughts it pretty much gives you the opportunity to train yourself to talk yourself out of those situations because even though you may have this circle people in the circle may not always be available for you and sometimes it is really just you and your grind you and your hustle or just you and your business and we have to learn how mm -hmm. to motivate ourselves mentally emotionally and spiritually we have to learn to talk ourselves mm -hmm. out of those negative situations um Right. Created all of it. Not a good place to be. Thank you, Latasha. I replaced those thoughts on where I'm going and I start thinking mm -hmm. about my future. Exactly. You have to learn to yes. start. Yeah. Just curious, are you two under 30 years old? No, I'm, I'm closer to 40. <laughs> uh, and I'm a little old. <laughs> um, yeah, we're, we're on the other side of the 30 spectrum. But um. We have to start having those conversations of motivation with ourselves. We have to start, we have to learn to push ourselves. And the only way to really learn how to do that is to be in a situation where you talk negatively to yourself. Now, let me just say this. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying go out here and just negatively, and I mean, purposely talk down to yourself. No, definitely don't do that. But we all know we have those moments when, stuff ain't quite working out right and we start feeling some type of way we have to mm -hmm. lift ourselves we have to inspire ourselves we have to just um speak life into ourselves because all nobody's going to be there all the time to do it so when you start ha mm -hmm. having those negative conversations just be like you know what i started this business had i not started this business I would not have had the first sale. I would not have had the second sale. But because I started this business, I've had this many sales. I've had this particular opportunity arise as a result of this. So you have to like, yes, exactly, Latasha, you have to check yourself. 
and mm -hmm. speaking positively to yourself is checking yourself it's like wait a minute now hold on you can put in all this work you're not going to be talking to me like this let hold up let's get that straight for one I put my money into this business. I get up every day and work this business. You're not going to be talking to me like that. <laughs> you know, okay. you have to have these conversations <laughs> with yourself. Trust me. And think about it like this. If somebody else came at you like, your business ain't this, your business ain't popping, mm -hmm. your business ain't such a... Wait, hold on. You're going to defend your business, right? You need to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. when, you're, when you start telling yourself these things, you need to come back like, hey, hold on now. You don't know me like that. <laughs> My my business is popping. It might not be popping right now at this moment, but it's 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 popping. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get back there. Allison. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love all of what you are saying right now. You know <laughs> what here's here's what I'll add. Even this, even when you're having those moments where you're 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 speaking negatively, where you're you're talking down to yourself, even when you're having those moments it is still part of the process. And let me explain to you why it's part of the process as well as why it's so important for you to do exactly what Ruby just said. That exercise is tremendously effective. Are you aware that there are people who still don't like Oprah? Are you aware that there are people who could care less if they ever see a Tyler Perry movie? There are people who refuse to buy Microsoft products that Bill Gates created. There are people who will never use a Dell. They want to use an Apple or they will never use an Apple. They will only use a Dell. And the, the reason that I'm bringing those things up is those people are tremendously successful or in the case of Steve Jobs, may he rest in peace, were tremendously successful, but they still had criticizing. They still had haters. They still had people who were waiting for them to fall, even when they got to the pinnacle of success that they actually reached. It takes a tough skin. So what the universe is teaching you now is how to deal with that rejection, how to deal with that criticism, because right now it seems like it's huge, but it's not, it's nothing compared to where you want to go. As you get bigger, as you grow more, as you have more profit, as you have more money, you will attract more people who think you're great, but you are also, because the rule of balance says that this is necessary, yes. you're also going to attract people who don't think you're great, who are waiting for your downfall, who want to see you fail. You are going to be at attracting the same amount of people, and if you have the same mindset you do now with that smaller business that you're building... The minute you get to, say, a billion-dollar status like, like Oprah and you find you, you have somebody who shows you an article, this person says that you're this, even with that billion dollars in your bank account, you're going to tank. And your business won't be soon to follow. So take the rejection now. Learn how to do the self-talk to yourself mm -hmm. now. Learn how to say all the things to yourself that your brain is saying to you now. Pretend that it's someone else speaking it so you can come back. Exactly how Ruby said it. Start talking back to that negative stuff so that you can develop the tough skin that you need right. to withstand the bigger critics that are coming. Exactly. Exactly. But thank you all for tuning in to Soul Sunday with Ruby and thank Allison. You. We are discussing entrepreneurship and those moments where you are second guessing yourself like, uh, should I really be doing this? but it has more of an mm -hmm. emotional or mental or spiritual effect on you. Now, um, let's see. You, what are we going to talk about next on the list? Nothing seems to be going as planned. <laughs> and I laugh. Because, <laughs> I laugh because, you know, we all try to plan stuff out. Oh, I'm going to plan out this entrepreneurial journey. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so funny that's so funny i'm gonna do this and then in six months after that i'm gonna do this and then in a year after that i'm gonna have this throw that whole plan away I'm, I'm just throw the whole plan away don't even have a plan really just be like you know what i can do this i can you know we're just gonna go with the flow um mm -hmm. you need to pray and meditate on it you need to grind, you need yes. to, you know, and then just let it flow. And the reason I say that is because mm -hmm. when we try to plan things and they don't go anything like we thought it would, 
then we start having those moments where we're like, but I planned it like this and I was expecting it to go this way, but it didn't. Am I doing the right thing? Throw that whole plan away. And then the next plan you got, throw that plan away. <laughs> Latasha said, no, please have a plan. No, Latasha, I mean it in the sense where when we try to plan too much and for some of us, when we when it doesn't go exactly as planned then it starts to have this mental and emotional effect on us of course i'm not saying they i'm not saying on monday you got this new job then on tuesday you know what i'm gonna throw that whole plan away and just go out here and be an entrepreneur no that's that's not what we're saying but yes tasha latasha you do have to be willing to adjust but mm -hmm. it's just to say even though you might have this plan in most cases it's not, that's not how it's going to go. And you have to be mm -hmm. extremely, extremely flexible and be able to adjust and be able to be, be, be able to think quickly on your feet. And not only that, sometimes you have to learn to let go of things. Um, yes. Girl, I know, you know, girl. <laughs> Hi, good evening, beautiful smile. Have a big thing. Don't read it. Oh, Don't okay. read it. Uh -uh. Don't read it. Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> with oh, back to the plan. You can you can write down goals. You can write down things that you want to achieve. You can write down um dates and deadlines and stuff like that. But you can't be really specific about your plan because you thought you were going to go right and make it to here, but you need to go back and go around and make this left and curve around and go under this bridge and then you're going to get there. But we don't want you, yes. while you're on this actual journey, not the one that you planned, we don't want you to feel like I made the wrong decision because it's not going the way I planned for it to go. Your life mm -hmm. ain't going the way you plan. <laughs> and, and it's no way you can expect for a business plan to go the way you expect it. You just Not at all. To, to hustle, to meditate on it, hustle and grind and flow and always remind yourself of the progress you've made. Even though your progress may not yeah. be to the right, your progress might be to the left, but learn how to appreciate mm -hmm. that. Do not let that deter you from where it is that you're trying to get to, whatever goals you're trying to accomplish, whatever legacy you're trying to leave your kid. Because it's, I would tell you this <laughs> where I am today, I ain't playing for none mm -hmm. of this. I, even this morning mm -hmm. when I woke up, uh, what are we going to do today? <laughs> Mm -hmm. um not to say i'm an irresponsible entrepreneur but it's just the point like i said um we don't want you to create a plan because as soon as things start going differently than what you plan we don't want that to mentally or emotionally affect you in such a way that you feel like you've made the wrong decision or you're doing the wrong thing allison yeah, here's the thing about planning, and, and this is just based off of my experience. What planning does is give you a false sense of security, and it gives you uh, a false sense of being in control. Now, if you are talking about creating a business, you do need to come up with a plan. You do want to make sure, you know, first off, what is your business about? Uh, what is the market? What is the demographic that you want to reach? What are some of the things that you hope to accomplish through this business and then the flip side of what you hope to accomplish with the profit that you make from this business for yourself personally, for your, your family, for your friend, whatever. So you do want to have that plan. Here's the problem that some people make though. We end up in situations where we want to say, okay, I'm going to wait until I have $50,000 saved up. And I talked a little bit about this last week too. I want to wait until I have $50,000 saved up and then I'm going to go out there. But here's where the planning is, is not helping you. Number one, you're making that plan based off of your current budget situation. You're wait, making it off the fact that you have a steady income and you have cable, cell phones, and 
and all of these other things to take care of. But what's happening is you're, you're planning to still live like an employee when you need to be developing an entrepreneurial mindset. And the number one thing that an entrepreneur needs to learn is how to be frugal, how to get the most that they can for the least amount possible in the beginning so that they don't go under. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about planning, what we're saying is we don't want you to take the employee mindset. A lot of times what people want to do is start a business but not be uncomfortable. They want to start the business, but they still want to live the way that they live before they started the business. They still want to buy clothes and go shopping and go traveling and have the, the fastest Internet and have the newest phone and the, the hottest clothes and their hair done every day and their nails done every week and their pedicures and their massages. They don't want to give up anything. They just want to be able to say that they started a business. It does not work that way. You have to learn how to sacrifice. If you don't sacrifice for your business, your business is not going to grow. You don't get to be that one person who gets to smoothly transition from being an employee to being an entrepreneur. You're going to have to take bumps on the head because those bumps are necessary. How many of those bumps you take are going to be dependent on how much you're willing and how quickly you're willing to learn these lessons. So when we're talking about planning, we're saying, hey, plan your business, but don't make so much effort trying to plan how to not be uncomfortable as you build it. Mm -hmm. Understand that you will be, you're supposed to be, and eventually you won't be anymore. Mm -hmm. And he said, those bumps hurt. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They really do. Those they do. <laughs> um. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Soul Sunday with Ruby and Allison. Uh, we are discussing entrepreneurship and some of those emotional, mental, or spiritual moments where we start second-guessing ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. One other thing, well, the next thing that I want to talk about, which we don't really get to talk about, is being an entrepreneur and dealing with some type of mental or emotional illness or some form of unhealthiness. Um, one thing that we don't really take into consideration is that pretty much whatever we're dealing with personally, uh, once we start this business, it is going to affect us professionally from that particular standpoint. And yes. for one, understanding that it's going to affect you um, even though you, you try to keep it from, it, it don't always work. But even though it's going to affect you, you have to have in your mind that even though my life may be a certain way negatively, um, personally, I cannot allow it to affect me so much to the point where professionally I feel like a failure. Or professional, professionally I feel like I'm not good enough. And the reason I wanted to bring that to light is because I'm not saying, um, he says, is marriage a business? For some, it is. For some, marriage mm -hmm. is a business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, if you know that personally you have issues that you have to deal with, just make sure you take that into a lot of consideration when you start your business. And say, even though... I may be dealing with this personally, um, even though I may be dealing with this depression, I may be dealing with this anxiety. I cannot allow that to overshadow things I'm trying to accomplish. Don't allow that to make you second guess becoming an entrepreneur or um, feeling like um, that's an indication that you should not continue to pursue your business or work on your business or anything like that. If anything, I would suggest getting some type of help, whether it be a psychotherapist, whether you have to um, speak with someone and actually get medication or, you know, pills or antidepressants or anything like that. Do that, but still continue to work on your business, still continue to pursue your dreams, still continue to, you know, build that legacy for your children because... Mm -hmm. Uh, mental and emotional unhealthiness or illnesses 
play a huge part in what we do every day, personal, professional, it, it doesn't matter. Um, with the family and relationships, when we go to work, it doesn't matter. And it has a way of um, being magnified once we start to reinforce those thoughts. So if you, before you started your business, you felt like you were not good enough, then starting a business mm -hmm. and things are not going right are going to make you even feel more so like you're not good enough. So mm -hmm. if you know you're already dealing with something, whether you're getting help or not, if you already know you're already dealing with something prior to becoming an entrepreneur, then just make sure that you are careful um, not to allow that to overpower what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Just know that, okay, if I'm dealing with this right now, then today I have to try extra hard to be focused. I have, I have to try extra hard to pursue whatever it is I'm trying to pursue today or accomplish whatever it is I'm trying to accomplish today. So I'm going to go ahead and let Allison kind of comment on that right mm -hmm. now. <laughs> so when we're when we're talking about these the mental health and, and emotional health here here's the thing if you if you are dealing with uh self-esteem issues self-worth issues the rejection that you get when you try to offer a product is going to exacerbate that if you are dealing with a toxic relationship you're dealing with someone who's emotionally abusive mental physical narcissistically abusive. if you're dealing with that and then attempting to start a business Anytime that you have a hiccup on that side, it's going to affect your business. Likewise, anytime that you, again, have a rejection, have a setback. If you have someone telling you that you're not going to mount to anything and then you have a setback on the business side, it's going to reaffirm that what they're saying is right. And so the reason that it's so important that you get some assistance is because when you take a big chance, when you take a risk, it pulls all of the ugly about you to the surface. Mm -hmm. And if you are not effective in creating the right circle, the right tribe, the right people, the right mindset within to counteract that, then as it brings all of that ugly about you, all of those things that aren't true, all of those things that maybe are true, as it brings all that stuff to the surface, it's going to take you out. And so what you have to do, and, and I'm... My thing is relationships. That's what I discuss. That's what I'm passionate about. If you're in a toxic relationship, you got to get out. I'm going to leave that at that. You can follow me on my page to hear more. But when you get to these situations where you know that you have something that you're dealing with, you have to get to a place where you give yourself a specific amount of time every day to counteract those thoughts. I know I have self-esteem issues. I also know that one of the things that I'm going to have to deal with as I start this business is people telling me no. So what can I do to not let those things take me under? Well, you want to start listening to affirmations. You want to start listening to videos that talk about getting out of that negative mentality. You want to make sure that you're writing down words of affirmation for yourself. You want to make sure that you're looking in the mirror and speaking some of those things over yourself. All of this is going to sound weird and completely ineffective until you notice that they start working. Mm -hmm. And so these are some of the things that you want to consider doing as you start this business. If you know you're going mm -hmm. into entrepreneurship with the you know you're going into entrepreneurship missing your mom. You know you're going into entrepreneurship uh, wishing that you had more friends and wishing that you didn't feel quite so alone and by yourself. You might be in a new city and don't know anybody. You don't have that tribe. Your you may be right in your hometown, but you don't have anyone who believes in what you're mm -hmm. doing. You have to go ahead and be proactive in developing your exit strategy mentally when those things start to attack you. And there it is. So <laughs> today is Soul Sunday with Ruby and Allison. And today we have been discussing entrepreneurship and those mental, emotional, um, spiritual moments where you are second guessing yourself and thinking maybe entrepreneurship may not be right for you. But it actually mm -hmm. is. You, you know, we just kind of wanted to bring some attention to that. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, um, with Soul Sunday, Allison and I have been doing this since November of last year. 
And that's a lot of talking that we've been doing since November of last year. <laughs> but um, I really wanted to do this because, or start doing this because there are a lot of things that we should be talking about that we don't. And, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to use this platform or my platform as an opportunity to do so. Now, um, mm -hmm. I think we've actually covered quite a bit on this particular topic because time is just going by like fast. It is, it is going by yes. fast. Um, let me see. Mm -hmm. Next week, I think we should talk about relationships and uh, mental health. Talk okay. about that next week, you know, just to kind of give okay. the entrepreneur a break, you know, to focus on yeah. all we've talked about for the last few weeks. You know, people like talking about relationships, so we're going to talk about that mm -hmm. and mental and emotional illness, health and wellness, that whole thing. Um, and the reason I wanted to talk about that is because relationships are always a hot topic, but mental and emotional situations need to be addressed early on in a relationship not even the relationship and the getting to know phase before you even mm -hmm. start dating really but you know we'll save that for next week but of course this week we're gonna go with our question for the week um pretty much with this particular <laughs> question i asked the question Allison and I are going to give our answers, and if you feel that you want to share your answer, then definitely do so in the comments, or if you don't want to do it in the comments, then you can message either one of us. It's absolutely fine, but, you know, it's just a little <laughs> something different for Soul Sunday, you know, but this week's question is, would you trade a high-paying career for making half of that doing something that you love? I already know what Allison answer gonna be. <laughs> but again, the question, would you trade a high paying career for making half of that doing something that you love? That is a very interesting question because right now I know it's a lot of people out here making a lot of money and are not happy. Mm -hmm. But me, mm -hmm. I, I definitely would trade. I have um, the last job that I had, I was, which was almost, I say about two and a half years ago. I'm working, I'm going on three years of being a full-time entrepreneur, but the last job that I had, I wasn't making six figures, but I was making, I say anywhere between 50 and 60 K a year between mm -hmm. being salaried and commissions and other bonuses and everything else. But I mm -hmm. happily left that job, and at that particular time, I was working my skincare company, and I definitely did it. Um, I haven't gotten to the 50, 60K mark yet, but I wouldn't, you know, I would definitely not go back. If I had to do it all over again, I would definitely do the same thing. This is much more mm -hmm. fulfilling. This is much more peaceful, and for so many different reasons, mentally, emotionally, energetically, physically, definitely, I would. I would. Allison? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yes. A thousand times. Yes, I would do that. I did do it. Just like Ruby said, she already knew the answer. She knows the background, but I... I was I was within a few thousand of making six figures and I hated did I say hated hated my last job hated it hated <laughs> <laughs> I I enjoyed most of the people I enjoyed my manager but the job itself was horrible it was a horrible fit for me and I kept sticking and staying for the check and that was the worst decision that I've ever made so what I found is when you are doing something that you love, it doesn't feel like work. Mm -hmm. And because of the fact that it doesn't feel like work, we hear that a lot, but let's go a little bit past that. Because of the fact that it doesn't feel like work, 
You don't need to spend as much money. People don't understand a lot of the things that they have right now is because they want to be distracted or uh, brought back down. Decompression. It's either decompression or distraction from a job that you can't stand. You have all the Netflix. You you go and buy the phone on the payment plan because you feel like I have this job I hate. I deserve to have something to show for it. I have this job I hate. I deserve to go on vacation. I have this job I hate. I deserve to do A, B, C, or D. However, you start doing something that you enjoy, that you don't need an alarm clock to wake up from, that you don't need to pump yourself up for or get your, your tears out on the way to work. You don't care as much about vacation. You don't care as much about what's on TV. You don't care as much about those things because you finally have balance and balance just costs less money. Just putting that out there. Yes. Like I told somebody, <laughs> I say 15% by switching to entrepreneurship. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you don't need as much gas. You don't need no gas, really, because the only time you go somewhere is to the store, which is probably <laughs> right down the street. You don't spend so much right. on gas. You don't spend so much on eating mm -hmm. because you at home, you eat what's at the house. And if you don't feel like going nowhere, guess what? You saving gas and you saving money because you're going to eat what's at the house. But absolutely. That is our question of the week. Um, I put the card back so I can't go back so I can repeat it. But just rewind the video a little bit and y'all can get the question. <laughs> but thank you everybody for tuning in with me and Allison. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and shout out a business this week. Um, Miss Jaleesa Wilcox. Um, of course, for y'all that know, I have my internet radio show, Soul Therapy with myself and Sarah. And um, one of our sponsors for the month of, uh, month of August is Jaleesa Wilcox with Bla uh, BlackCreditExcellence.com. Um, she is here on Facebook, um, Jaleesa Wilcox. So definitely reach out to her. Shout out to you, Jaleesa, for being one of our sponsors. But um, definitely reach out to her, you know, to get your finances in order. And while I'm speaking about that, you can also reach out to Allison because she be doing some, <laughs> some. Uh, she she got the finance and the money saving tips. Trust me, she learned a lot of money saving tips over the last few months. <laughs> oh, wow. it ain't nothing but the truth. But um, <laughs> we gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Um, if you want to reach out to me to get a chakra consultation, you can definitely do that. I'm doing many consults for $15. You can find me online at www.thegoddessgrind.com or soultherapyradio.life. Um, if you want, if you're interested in advertising there, being a guest on the show or being a product sponsor, reach out. Um, if you want to purchase either one of my books, you can do so. Just reach out to me. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Ruby D Artistry or The Goddess Grind or Soul underscore therapy underscore radio. So I'm going to stop right there so Allison can go ahead and get hers in because we're going to be here for a minute. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Peace and blessings, everybody. I am Alex and Denise, also known as the Petite Powerhouse. If you need any, uh, if you need a dynamic speaker for your next event, make sure you find me on allisondenise.com. Look up my booking information so that we can set up how to get me out there. I am available nationwide for your next event, whether it be for college, for conferences, for singles, for married people, for whatever it is that you need, training workshops. Make sure you go to allisondenise.com to find me. You can also go there for any assistance you need with individual, group, or couple coaching. I am just, I, I have been created, gone through the processes, and gone through the experiences I have to show you how to love people the right way, starting by loving yourself the right way as well. Uh, so again, allisondenise.com. You can reach me on social media right here under Allison Denise. Under as well as Allison Denise, aka the Petite Powerhouse, our official Facebook page, and our 501c3 nonprofit page, the HGL group. I can't believe I said fake book, but let me keep going. <laughs> and you can also find me on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube under Miss MS Allison Denise. All of these pages are new or being revamped, so make sure you sign up now. 
make sure you get in there now so that you don't miss anything once we get the ball rolling. Okay. Um, again, you can catch me right here on Sundays with Ruby. You can also catch me Friday nights with uh, the Bad Squad on Fishbowl Radio Network. And if you tune in to my personal page, you can also tune in with me Monday through Thursday nights at nine o'clock for Facebook Live, where we talk about different things related to relationships and life. I'm done. Yes. And <laughs> Miss Queen Corey says, thanks, ladies. Live was great as usual. I'm still going through my marriage issues, so I'm waiting for that convo again. Girl, tune in next week. All right. Tune in next week. Yeah. <laughs> And come to my page if you want some individual counseling or coaching. I got you. Yes. I can do it. Definitely <laughs> reach out to Allison. Because <laughs> you, uh, you don't want me to tell you what to do. <laughs> Not when it comes to that. <laughs> but we thank you all for tuning in to Soul Sunday. Make sure you join us here. Same time next Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. And we love y'all. We appreciate you. And peace out. We'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>